Coming up on Ask the Tech Guy, contact tracing apps and privacy next. Ask the Tech Guy comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Whether they're working in the office or remotely, visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you by LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. Hey, everybody. Leo Laporte here. Time for Ask the Tech Guy. I got a question at Ask the Tech Guy at twit.tv from Brad. He writes, I am very concerned about the COVID-19 tracking APIs put on my Android S9 when updated to Android 10. How can I remove it or go back to Android 9? Also, it's on all iPhones now, too. How can I have a smartphone that does not have this intrusive stuff? I thought this would be something you would be very much against. Thanks, Brad. Well, this is a complicated subject, of course, because uh, we're all worried about the pandemic and COVID-19. And I think many of us would like to help out in uh, stamping out COVID-19 so we can all get back to work and life can get back to normal. One of the ways uh, the medical community says we can do that is with contact tracing. The idea is if I know who has COVID-19 and I can see everywhere that person has been for the last two weeks and every other person that initial contact might have infected, I can isolate them all, quarantine them all, and prevent or at least reduce dramatically the spread of the virus. Now, this is a technique being widely used all over the world. In fact, it's the technique that's being used by the countries that have been the most successful in damping down uh, the pandemic, countries like New Zealand and South Korea. Uh, Apple and Google early on in this pandemic announced that they were going to create a programming interface or API for contact tracing. And they said, and they were very clear about this, that they were going to do it in a way that respects the user's privacy. They wrote a lot of white papers. Our own Steve Gibson looked at the white paper, was very impressed by the techniques they used. The whole idea of the API is it doesn't ever reveal who you are to anybody, especially the cell phone companies or the government. But it does help you track where you go and let people you might have contacted know that you've been diagnosed with COVID-19. But here's the thing. Yes, it's on all Android phones now. It's on, well, at least all Android phones with Android 10. It's on all iPhones, uh, any iPhone that's been updated with, uh, I think it was 13.5 that came out with this. But it is not a program and it's not doing anything. In fact, if you go to the settings on Android or iOS, they'll tell you, you can't enable this. You can't turn it on until you install a tracking app. And here's the interesting thing, and it's not for the reason you might think. Very few countries or states are adopting this API. It's just not that popular. And the reason it's not popular is because it's so privacy forward. Apple and Google have really done a good job of making sure that the data doesn't stay on the phone for very long, that it, nobody knows who you are, you're completely anonymous. And the problem is health officials say, well, that's no good to us. We want to know who you are. We want to know who you've seen. We want to be able to call them. We want to check up on them. We want to make sure that they're isolating properly. So very few very few health authorities are interested in the Apple-Google solution. There are a few states, four, in fact, out of the 50, Alabama, North Dakota, South Carolina, and Virginia, who've said they will develop an app. To my knowledge, none of them have yet. Uh, actually, there's a great list on 9 to 5 Mac. Zach Hall has started compiling it, keeping track of who's using the API. Uh, around the world, yes, some companies are using it. Uh, countries, I mean, are using it. Uh, you, you may remember at first Germany says, no way, now they're doing it. Japan's using it, Switzerland, Italy, Latvia, Estonia, the UK's considering it. But in most cases, countries are saying, yeah, it just doesn't give us enough information 
<laughs> so it's not going to be useful to us. In fact, there are a lot of people, including Bruce Schneier, who is a great security guy and a technologist, uh, and the Brookings Institution, a widely respected think tank, who said contact tracing apps never can work. As long as they're voluntary, not enough people will use them. Too many people, uh, frankly, like you, Brad, are worried about privacy concerns, so they're going to avoid those apps. Uh, and the, the apps themselves don't give enough information to the health authorities. Actually, the interesting thing, Brad, uh, your Google Maps app probably knows more about you and is sending it to more people than this COVID tracking API does. In fact, probably Google Maps would be the single most useful thing that health authorities could use because they could, you could anyway, look at your Google Maps and say, yeah, well, this is where I was in the last 14 days if you have location settings turned on. Um, you don't have to worry, in other words. It's just an API. It is not being turned on without your permission. In every case, and this is a requirement from both Apple and Google, the apps that use these APIs are installed voluntarily. Nobody's making you install these apps. And if you don't install them, nothing is turned on. You can't even do it yourself. It's just passively sitting there waiting for an app to come along. I think this is a great thing that Apple and Google did. They they tried to help solve in the in the best way they knew how with their capabilities this problem uh, being very privacy forward. And of course, people worldwide are concerned with privacy. It's another reason these apps have just not taken off. Singapore designed an app. I believe it does use the Google uh, Apple API. And it was only used by 25% of the population. Now, Singapore has managed to damp down the infection, but they've done it by human contact tracing and, and isolation. They've actually, that's my, which is much more privacy invasive. A, a person comes to your house as soon as you're diagnosed with the virus and says, all right, where you been? I need to know everywhere you've been. I need to know everywhere you've seen. They'll go to every business. They'll say, who was here then? I want to see the videos. It's much more privacy invasive, but that's what needs to be done if you want to use contact tracing and isolation to slow down the virus. That's a decision that will be made by governments, by individuals. That's a societal decision, what's best for society. But as far as it goes, as far as you know, your current phone situation, it's not doing, if you haven't installed an app and chances are very good you haven't, it's not doing anything. I would worry a lot more about the other trackers you have on your phone. You have a ton of them, and none of them have any of the restrictions that the Google Apple API have. They're gladly giving up your location and all sorts of personal information all the time. So don't worry about the COVID tracing apps. I personally, I would happily use it. Um, and, and happily share the information with health officials because I think we want to get over this. We want to get on to the next thing. We don't want to stay inside forever. But that's a decision everybody has to make for themselves, and I understand your desire for privacy. It's one of the reasons these apps just aren't taking off. Hey, thanks for the question. A really interesting question, uh, Brad. Our show today brought to you by LastPass. The folks at LastPass are there to protect you as we head for home with your IT department under a great burden New threats, new regulations even, make strong security very complex. LastPass allows employees to do their work securely in the office or from home. They won't store your master password. That way, hackers can't get to it. Encryption happens exclusively at the device level before syncing to LastPass for safe storage. And in transit, LastPass uses the same security as banks and the military to make sure you're getting the most security possible. Visit LastPass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's LastPass.com slash twit thanks everybody for joining me uh another question next week i hope you'll stop by and if you have a question for the tech guy you're i'm your tech guy just email ask the tech guy at twit.tv see you stumped on a nasty tech conundrum email ask the tech guy at twit.tv